Interview and job search strategies at work. Recently, I was in Chicago. I stayed up there, went to see the the cloud, the cloud bean. Uh, they have an ice skating rink in the uh, Millennial Park, I believe it is, or the Millennium Park, one of the, the two right there. Very nice location. So when I stayed in the hotel, the front desk individual got to talking a little bit. And, um, you know, it was kind of cool because uh, the individual told me that uh, he was going to a two-year course for, uh, you know, IT, basically. And um, he said, Do, if, if I have any advice. And I was, well, so interestingly enough, you say that because that's what I do. My, co- my podcast is about that. Um, what I talk about, my book is about that. My course is about that very thing. And if you don't know, my course is, uh, I have two of them. I have three, actually, so... One is, uh, it's on Udemy, either on Udemy or on Get uh, Unteachable. So the Udemy one, if you search my name in Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y dot com, Gary McNeely in Udemy, or you can go to Teachable. So you can go to, here's the website, getajobnit.teachable.com. So that one, both are the same price. Uh, now sometimes Udemy does, uh, does uh, lower up, raise the price based on the sale, but the one on uh, Teachable is $9. At any rate, so I talked to him a little bit about it, and of course I gave the resources to him. You know, I gave him the information so that he could go and, if he so chooses, uh, you know, enroll in the course if he desires to do that. So I got to talking and maybe talked about a half hour, roughly, and I just spelled it out for him, basically, and I said, I asked, the first question I asked was, how much do you want to make, you know? kind of laughed a little bit. I said, really, how much do you want to make? You want to make six figures? You want to make, you know, 30000 a year, whatnot? I believe he made uh, 13 an hour, I think it was, where he worked at. And I said, you can definitely make a lot more than that, entry level, actually, beyond that. So I said, well, you know, where you're at now, you could probably make, in IT in the States, probably make within three months, you could probably make like 40000 50000 a year, something like that. And I said, well, if you want to work overseas, you make quite a bit more money than that, like the Middle East, for instance. And I told him the certification that you need, and I'll tell everybody this, the same thing, you need a Security Plus. It's CompTIA Security Plus is what you need. The reason you need that is, again, if you're, uh, well, just to recap, though, or just to make, make sure everybody knows this, if you're a U.S. citizen, you go overseas and work for a U.S. company, um, you know, on a government installation they require you to have a, a security plus, which is a certification that is needed to um, to validate your skills, so to speak. It's just something that they they need. It's just a little. It's a check mark. It, you know, if you don't have it, so what? You need it if you want to work there. That's how it works, and that's the bottom line, really. And um, that's basically what I told him on that one. Um, and I said that the competition is very low if you get that. Because you won't have to worry about a lot of competition because uh, a lot of people aren't going to take the time to get that certification. And it's, it's a small amount of number, basically. So I, I met, made mention to him that if you take your hands and you, um, you, you know, make them real wide, well, that's your competition right now. But overseas, it's a lot less than that. The other thing I mentioned was, well, among other things, but I'll tell you one of the other things I mentioned was, Going on interviews every day or, you know, at least once a week, going on an interview, understanding what you don't know about the current field you're trying to get into. For instance, Active Directory, and I told them that is one of the key things to learn. Um, So going through an interview process really will get you to understand what it is you don't know, how do you need to learn, um, what's the technique, what are the things they're asking for from an employer's perspective. So you take that knowledge and then you say, okay, thank you. Maybe you record the conversation, whatever you want to do, write it down, take notes, whatever, whatever, whatever helps you remember basically. And then you just research that information and you say, okay, what, what do I not know about this? And what do I need to know? So that my next interview, I can, I can do better. The other thing was, um, I made mention of, if you know, a friend, for instance, something like might be like this, it's, you might, you might say there's um, overseas, they don't really know if you're going to work there or not. They don't know. 
Well, how do you how do you make them understand? Hey, listen, I want to work there. Well, here's what you do: you find the place that's hiring. You go on the on Google and you just search. Well, who's who's hiring in that place, that location overseas? You research the company. Maybe you find uh, someone on LinkedIn who works there, and you chat with them a little bit. Hey, what's it like there? You want to get an idea of what is it like to work there, almost as if you're. Uh, if you ever played the game before where you go around the room and you say a word and at the end of it there's a sentence that goes on. So everybody has a part of the puzzle uh, at the end. Basically like you want to say this. You want to get to the point where you say, you know, um, how have you been over here? You know, whatever country it is. And you say, no, I haven't. However, I have a friend who uh, used to work in, let's say, whatever country who used to work on this place who did this job. And they say it's great. What you're, what you're really telling the HR person, essentially you're saying you know a little bit more about it, and the likelihood is that they're going to talk more to you. Because, oh wow, we don't have to convince you to come here. Fantastic. Okay, awesome. So that's spectacular. So, so that's, those are the couple of the things I mentioned to them, as well as, you know, of course I said Security Plus, definitely got to have that, and your competition, uh, get that lower... Passport goes without saying you need that. I also said, here's what I also said. I said, when you're at work, be an introvert. When you're at home, be an extrovert. What I mean is when you're at work, have the notepad and pen with you and write down whatever it is that they say to do. Okay, make sure, okay, I do this. Can I do this? Yes. Okay. Um, is this something in my job? Yes, write it down. You want to under, you know, get to a point where they're looking at you and they, they see you writing notes down. Oh, okay, this person's really, um, they're really, you know, paying attention to what I'm saying and they're really taking notes, really trying to understand. At war, at nighttime, be an extrovert at night, meaning when you go home, Google research, put your own lab up, joezetacenter.com, good resource for you there. Um, go in and start your own, get your own stuff going on. Maybe create videos on YouTube. You know, something like that. Um, anything you can do to enhance your skill set. Active Directory is one of those things that you could definitely learn on your own. Be it VirtualBox, uh, be it go to Joe's Data Center, get an ESXi host for like 30 bucks a month, or whatnot. So the reason I say all this is you want to get to the point where, you know, you have those at home or after work, basically, your extrovert time. You want to be able to get to the point where You've already done those things. You've had that uh, moment where, oh, that's how that works. You want to be able to tell a story. So also the thing I mentioned to him was, I said, take four, uh, three four-hour days a week. So blocks of four-hour day or four-hour chunk of time three times a week. And then factor in, well, how much do you make now an hour? So that's what your time is worth. So note that on a piece of paper saying, for instance, 13 bucks an hour, 13 times four. That's what you're worth. So put that in there. Okay. And it's almost as if you're, it's almost as if you're, you know, that's an expense to you. So your time is worth money. You're teaching yourself that's an expense. So now you fact, okay, factor that in. Okay, good. Right. I know that. Maybe, you know, after a month or so of teaching yourself, you have a, a good beefy number. Well, what you do is you take that number and you tack that on to the job you're going to get. Like the job you're going to get, the offer. What you do is you tack that number on. So, for instance, they offer you 70000 a year, let's just say. And you've done, you know, however many weeks or whatever of training. So that comes out to like $500, let's just say. So what you want to say is, they say, well, what, what is your, uh, what is your offer? Or what is your, um, what is your counter offer, let's say, right? They offer you seventy. You say, I'd like to really make $70,500. And what you could say is something like, um, you know, you might want to be just say, hey, this would be a good intro. Say, hey, uh, I, I'm just reimbursing myself for my training because I've taught myself training. This is a training expense. And that's the reason I'm, I'm, you know, doing the extra 500. And that's going to start a conversation on their part. And how you can do it is you can say, oh, well, the reason is because, you know, I, I do this many hours a week on training myself. And I figure this is a good way to get reimbursed for that. You know, it could go a good way. You know, I'm pretty sure it's going to go a good way for you, for you in that they're like, oh, good. Oh, that's really good.
good for you. Good, good ambition on that. So those are the things I had mentioned to this individual. And of course, you know, of course it's, um, you know, of course, get a job in it.teachable.com. Go there. It's uh, $9 for the course. Uh, and it's a markdown. It's only for uh, holiday season. It's going to go back up in price afterwards. But right now it's $9. So it's about 20 hours of course material that you yourself can learn from nothing. You know nothing about um, IT. You take the course. You watch the videos. You follow step by step. And when I explain stuff, I actually explain it um, as if, you know, I explain it in a way that you understand. I leave the problems in. If I incur a problem, I leave it in. Because if I see an issue, you're going to see an issue, definitely. And so I don't edit out my mistakes at all. I leave them all in. Because likelihood is you're going to have the same mistake. And you can learn from what it is I, I've i messed up, basically. So, everybody, I'd like to thank you for listening to this podcast. And have a great day.